I wanted to try a more efficient abbreviated version of my previous video that explained the bond's yield to maturity, also called the yield. And here's my example. In order to compute the bond's yield to maturity, we need four inputs. So I'm assuming a bond face value of $100 is my first input. So that's also called the principal or par value of the bond. I'm assuming a coupon rate of 6% per annum payable semi-annually. My third assumption that I need is the maturity of the bond. I'm assuming it's a two-year bond. And the fourth and most important assumption is the bond's price. And so in my first iteration, to get the price, I compute what we would call the theoretical price of the bond. And the theoretical price of the bond is based on, based on discounting the bond's future cash flows at the spot rates, or also called the zero rates. So here are those spot rates, or we could call this the zero rate curve, and I just made them up as upward sloping, and they're here in orange. So if we, the purpose of a zero or spot rate is to discount a future cash flow. My first coupon here is $3, and you can see I translate that future cash flow into a present value by discounting as usual, but in this case, assuming with semi-annual compound frequency. So I get a series of future cash flows, but discounted to their present value equivalents, such that the sum of those is what we call the theoretical price of the bond. In this case, $103.88. And that is the fourth and most significant input into the yield to maturity, such that we can see here Excel gives me the yield to maturity with the rate function. So if I just rekey that in, I can use the rate function starting with the number of periods, and it's a two-year bond, but our compound frequency is semi-annual, two periods per year. So I'm gonna say two years times two periods per year, or four periods. My payment is the coupon of $3. My present value is the price of the bond. And so I'm gonna use negative here, the price, negative, as if it's a cash outflow or what I'm paying for the bond. And then my future value is the face value of the bond. I'll, so that if I calculate that, what I get is 1.981%, but that's a six month rate. So I multiply by two to annualize it and give me what's called the bond equivalent basis or a per annum yield of 3.962. And so, in terms of the interpretation, the, import, the first important point about what the yield to maturity means is that it's illustrated right down here. Notice, if I take the yield to maturity and use the yield as the single discount rate, and I discount the same cash, future cash flows, after all, these are the bonds, future cash flows. If I discount them, at the yield to maturity, or the yield, instead of at the spot rates, then you'll notice I get the same price. So the first important point about interpreting the yield to maturity is that it is the single discount rate we could use for all of the bond's cash flows that discounts to a present value that equals the bond's price. That's the meaning of the yield to maturity. The second interpretation point is illustrated right here that mathematically it's the same as the internal rate of return where I've just treated this as a series of cash flows, first the outflows, then the inflows. And so closely related to this and the first two points is that the most important input is the bonds price or the initial cash flow. And we've used here a theoretical bond price, pricing the bond by spot rates. But the idea with the yield to maturity is that it's based on whatever the traded price is. So this could be called a fundamental price, but there are technical factors that affect a bond's price. And so for example, 
maybe that bond just swings down to $97 due to some uh, immediate uh, liquidity issue or uh, demand disruption. And so technical factors bring it down below. So it's trading cheap relative to its fundamental price. Well, the yield is the single discount rate that's used for all the cash flows that produces a present value equal to the bond's price. So the yield accepts that and does not necessarily expect a fundamental input into the price. And third, interpretation is that if I just go back to this, it is a weighted average, the yield is a weighted average of the spot prices. So if we did use the theoretical bond price, we do expect the yield here to be within the range of spot prices and in fact nearest to the spot rate associated with the great that where, where most of the cash flow is and that's the final cash flow so the yield is in fact a complex weighted average of the spot rates and the fourth point of interpretation is that this will not be the realized yield on the bond it's an internal rate of return so if we pay this price and then we receive these cash flows Will the yield equal the realized rate of return? No, it will not necessarily. It will only equal the realized rate of return under two conditions. If we hold the bond to maturity, so we receive these cash flows, and importantly, if and only if we reinvest the coupons at the same yield to maturity, because the bond has both duration or interest rate risk and reinvestment risk of the coupons. So if we reinvest the coupons at a different rate than the yield, then the realized return will be different than the yield. So I hope that's helpful.